I move the motion relating to the airline industry in the terms in which it appears on the notice paper. Speaker, it's obviously no secret that Australian airlines have regularly been in the headlines lately for all the wrong reasons, like unfair pricing practices, poor communications with customers, advertising fares for cancelled flights and frustrating flight delays. Indeed, in its recent report on domestic airline competition in Australia, the ACCC reported that service reliability remains a significant concern. And no wonder when just in December last year the industry cancelled more than 2,200 flights, or 5 per cent, which is more than double the industry long-term average. Passengers are also struggling with flight delays, with on-time performance rates declining. Indeed, just 63.6 per cent of flights arrived on time in December. What's even more frustrating is that these poor results are often the consequence of problems within the control of the airlines, with the ACCC pointing the finger at airlines' management of systemic issues associated with the pandemic, pilot shortages, pilot training bottlenecks and some supply chain disruptions. To be clear, my criticism is not directed at frontline airline staff. Indeed, most staff are among the best in the world, as I experienced just last week on my short trip to London for Julian Assange. No, my criticism is directed squarely at airline management and the terrible decisions they have been making to maximise profit at the expense of all else. Deputy Speaker, plenty of constituents have contacted my office about all this, sharing stories of delayed or cancelled flights and the financial burden that comes with that as well as evidence of unfair pricing practices and poor communication from airlines. For example, one constituent told me about a flight he and his wife booked to Perth with Virgin late last year. The boarding time came and went, and it was not until one hour after the scheduled departure that they were advised the flight was cancelled. While they were booked on another flight the following evening, there was no compensation for their $120 taxi fare to and from the airport, nor for the very significant inconvenience. Another constituent was out of pocket about $700 when Jetstar cancelled her flight at the last minute. She lost more than $500 just on the rental car and airport parking and was told by Jetstar that, uh, in no uncertain terms that the airline won't compensate these pre-booked expenses. Deputy Speaker, the airlines should not be able to get away with this, but they do, because it's mostly the airlines who get to decide what happens when a passenger has missed a holiday, an important work meeting, a wedding or even a funeral. All too often, customers are left in terrible despair and very significantly out of pocket. Now, yes, while it is the case that Australians have some rights under Australian consumer law, those rights are far from clear when it comes to flight delays and cancellations. Moreover, the lack of effective mechanisms for consumers to resolve disputes and enforce their consumer guarantees leaves consumers having to resort to raising problems with regulators or pursuing claims in tribunals or small claim courts which is time-consuming, sometimes costly and often beyond people. No wonder contacts to the ACCC about airline issues have remained persistently high and above pre-pandemic levels. Indeed, for the first nine months of 2023, contacts to the ACCC about airlines were 179 per cent higher than in 2018 and 100 per cent higher than in 2019. And no wonder, given Australia's lack of regulation, enforcement and complaint handling mechanisms. Indeed, Australia lags behind other countries when it comes to securing compensation from airlines. For example, in the UK, all airlines are required by law to ensure passengers arrive at their destination, to provide compensation if flights arrive more than three hours late for reasons within the airline's control, and support passengers who are delayed with meal vouchers, phone calls, accommodation and transport. Clearly, the Australian government must implement similar protections here. Now, while it's obviously a positive that Qantas is promising service improvements, the airlines simply cannot be left to regulate themselves. No, we need strong consumer, <coughs> excuse me, consumer protections, and the government must heed the calls of the ACCC, which, in its domestic airline competition report, called for an independent ombudsman scheme to handle consumer complaints and a targeted and fit-for-purpose compensation scheme for delayed and cancelled flights. Only then, Deputy Speaker, will Australians have confidence that they will not be unreasonably out of pocket for flight disruptions and, if they are, that there will be appropriate mechanisms to, in place to help navigate the system. I thank you, Deputy Speaker.